Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on The Slanted Lands, we're going to show you how to shoot a simple two-camera profile interview piece with talent on location. You can use this piece for Kickstarter campaigns, corporate videos, documentary work, and individual company profiling. I'm out with my photography class showing them how shooting an interview works. Don't be intimidated by the amount of people you see on set. These documentary pieces I usually shoot in a crew of no bigger than three people. Many times, in fact most of the time, I've done them with just me and a sound person. It's even very possible to shoot these alone if needed. Before starting the project, I create an outline. Several points that I want to cover. Where the company is located, what the main reason they are in business, how do they benefit the community. This outline should cover the main points I want to see in the interview and gives me guidance for the B-roll. Now I write a series of questions that through the interview process will illustrate the points in my outline. Finding a good location to shoot is critical. With Chip the Log Man, his personality was most important, but then the location was the next most important thing. If the location does not help the story, then I'll try to let it go out of focus and become undiscernible. In this case, I loved the location and it helped tell the story. The logs in the wooden cabin, the workplace really gave us a sense of who our subject was and what he does. I had walked the grounds when I arrived and wanted to shoot with the logs in the background. It's important to find a good location or two before everyone starts to arrive and then the pressure's on it becomes very difficult to make this decision. When it was time to shoot, it started snowing. My class was kind of scared. They didn't want to go out because it was stormy, but to me it was the perfect shot. I love how the falling snow looks in the frame. It was really beautiful. When I set up for an interview, I used two cameras. I set one on a wide medium shot and another one on a close-up shot and have them run simultaneously. The wide shot camera is positioned looking straight at the subject. I place the close-up camera on the right or left side of the medium shot camera depending on which direction I want the subject to look in the frame. If I want them to look to the right, I place the close-up camera to the right, then I stand to the right of that. If I want them to look to the left, I place the close-up camera to the left and then I stand to the left of that. Have the subject look right at you as you talk to them. Stand as close to the close-up camera as you can. Their look will be slightly off camera, but that's totally okay. You don't want their eyes jumping from camera to camera to you. It makes them look shifty or nervous. I used a two-stop ND to help throw the background out of focus just a little bit. Let's look at the lighting setup. Depending on when and where you shoot, you might not need lights at all. A bounce card on the person's face may be all you need. If I'm shooting outside, I just use reflector boards or a single softbox to brighten the face of the subject. In today's setup, we have a cloudy day and snow. We're going to use a new light that I'm testing for Photoflex called the North Star Light. I'm in love with this light because it's a single daylight balanced LED bulb in a strobe head that uses all the cool light modifiers. It's the equivalent of a 1K at 100 watts. I can use my beauty dish and soft boxes, reflectors and grids. Alright, you're going to hear a lot more about this light in the future. It's going to come out in September. For sound, I usually use two sources. The first is a Sennheiser lav mic I put on the lapel recording into a zoom microphone. The microphone is clipped to his lapel and we're recording into a zoom recorder. It gives us a nice sound and cuts most of the car noise in the background as we're right by the highway. I'll usually use a shotgun mic as a second capture source. This way I have two sound sources in case one of them has a problem. There truly is an art to interview and one you'll need to practice. Let your subject know that when you ask a question, the audience will only hear their response. If I ask, how many years have you been in business, and he says 12, well, that's all I'll have is 12. He needs to say, I've been in business building log homes for 12 years. Help them to know that you need to repeat the question in their response. So tell it, why did you choose to go into logs? I mean, what, what started you into this business? That's yeah, my second career. Uh, Let's we'll start back. I, I got in this business because... I got in this business because... I try not to stop them and say, no, I want you to say this or I need you to answer this way. Generally speaking, I try to keep coming back until I get the response that I think feels comfortable. When a question sparks emotion, I'm going to follow it right up with some other questions along the same line. Always look at the person when they're talking. Don't be looking at your notes or looking around or wondering about the camera. Make it really conversational. Laugh with them. Make the conversation feel comfortable and let it flow. B-roll is critical. 
B-roll is the footage that you shoot without sound that gives the piece its style. It's the shots of the logs, the machines, the people doing interesting things, the low angles, the crane shots. For me, using a crane or a slider takes your B-roll to a whole new production level. Make sure you have coverage of everything your subject talks about, or related things at least. B-roll really makes the story. You get the profile shots of the subject, shots with the family, shots of the subject at work. It's all the things that really make the piece interesting. Try to get as much coverage as possible. My rule of thumb is always shoot, don't turn the camera off. I also try to take as many beauty shots as possible and use my glide cam and slider to make that coverage look more professional. During the interview, listen to their responses. Make notes of the things that they talk about. Make sure you get B-roll to illustrate these things. If I say, I love playing with my dog, then you need B-roll of them playing with their dog. This makes the editing process go much smoother, makes the piece a lot richer. While I'm shooting my B-roll, I grab a camera, put it on a tripod, and start a time lapse, and then I just leave it. I'll run and do the things that I'm working on, I'll come back and reframe it, and start it again. Just a little thought. I do love this process of interviewing. I love meeting new people and hearing their stories. I hope this will help you feel more confident as you do two camera interviews. Just keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking.